We are here in the book of Acts, and I'll be honest with you, people have died. So we are going to jump into chapter 5, and, uh, and we are going to, you know what Terry, let's, instead of starting, we're going to be starting in verse 13, but uh, let's back up to 11, just to get a little bit there. So Acts chapter 5, beginning in verse 11, and we'll go all the way down to uh, 20. Okay. All right, this is the one with uh, chapter 12, or chapter 5 was the one with Ananias and, and Sapphira. And then she died. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. All of the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. <clears throat> As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as they passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. And then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. That is awesome. That is fantastic. All right, so uh, here we have the aftermath. After uh, Ananias and Sapphira have fallen down dead separately with three hours separating because they lied to the, the way that Peter says is you lied to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so, um, really a powerful start to that chapter. And then you see that this awe is just overwhelming everyone because they're like, what is going on? This is bizarre. Like, yeah. people are like, their faith is rising whether they agreed with what the Spirit had done or not. Right. Because it was for real. Um, and I think sometimes that we think that the only miracles are positive things to the individual to whom they happen. And I'm, it, at some point, if any of you want to address that at some point, feel free, but it, it is miraculous to fall down dead for no apparent reason, okay? It's not something that I want to happen to me, necessarily, unless I'm about to be burned at the stake, and then I definitely want it to happen to me right then. <laughs> but um, but you, my friend Daniel Gilbert told me a story one time of a lady that was in his church when they were pastoring out west, she had had a, a horse throw her, and she had um, this, she had basically broken her neck, and then it didn't heal back correctly, and the jarring motion of horseback riding, she could not do again. She couldn't get on a horse. And she was such a precious woman of God, and they just loved her, and they had just prayed and prayed and prayed, Lord, you know, heal her, that she, you know, that this would be set right. And through this miraculous turn of events, there was a physician, a, a surgeon, that's actually able to do the surgery, and through some connections, he's like, well, you caught me just in time because I'm about to relocate, and yes, I can do this surgery. Yes, I can give you, you know, whatever. And so he does the surgery. She has a full recovery, and she's able to ride horses again, 
and she never came back to church because the horse riding that she did was in rodeos and it was on Sundays. Now, you might look at that story and think, well, how could someone who, you know, the Lord worked all this out for them to have this? But I've seen the Lord give people businesses, and they just let the business run them. It was a blessed business. They were making money, but they didn't keep it under subjection to the Lord, and so it began to run their lives. And so they were all over the place. And so I, that's, I just wanted to kind of drop that in your mind, that is it possible that there are some miracles that maybe when we pray, Lord, we, we need your miracles to follow us because we believe that maybe some of those things might not be pleasant. I just want that as food for thought as we kind of dive in here. Mm -hmm. Deb? Jesus didn't heal everyone. And it points that out in the Bible that even Elijah, who there were many widows, but only one was given provision for the prophet. That's true. That's true. That's true. I mean more in, the, I would say I mean more in the context of something supernatural taking place that actually appears negative on the outside in order to bring perhaps a deeper good. Does that make sense? Yeah. John? When that takes place, people have to change. They don't yes. want to change. People like being warm and fuzzy like they are. They don't want to move. Right. And Sister Juanita said something before Bible class that really just tied into that. Is this, you know, we speak things with our mouth that we do not believe in our heart. <coughs> we pray things that we are, we're saying them, but if we really believed it, then there would be some change taking place, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I just wonder if, if we're going to really be that church from the book of Acts, you know, that church of action, if we may need to be opening ourselves up to faith to the point where um, someone loses their job or someone ends up stuck in rehab for a really long time. Or not selling a house. Or someone doesn't sell a house. That's one of Debbie's testimonies. Mm -hmm. Or someone, you know, there's there's like so many things that we are like, well, we need to pray about this because it needs to happen. You know, the positive needs to happen. But then what if the negative that happened is the thing that is, I'm, I'm sorry to be on a little bit of a tangent here, but I hit my elbow. That's why it hurts. I hit my elbow on a water slide. And... I didn't realize until this week when I went to, um, I was going to ride my motorcycle, and I always wear all my gear because it hurts to fall down, <laughs> and there's armor in my jacket, and so when I went, and it doesn't hurt me to use my arm, there's no, there's no pain there, it just feels sore, like a, like a bruise, but when I went to put on my helmet and my elbow connected with that armor, suddenly, I almost fell down. It was so painful. And I thought about something that John had said to me. John is one of my accountability partners, and he had just said this maybe, it was probably two months ago. It was like in June. He just said, have you been riding much lately? And I said, no, not really. It's hot, and there's a lot of traffic. And he said, well, I can't remember if he said, well, good. Um, you need to be careful. Or if he just said, he said something that just let me know that John had a feeling in a certain kind of way that had to do with me and my motorbike, okay? And I don't take those things lightly. And I thought about that when, because it's not convenient to have a painful elbow, but I'm not getting back on my motorbike because it's painful when I bend my arms in my jacket. So I have to wait for this to, do you see what I'm saying? 
I'm not saying it's miraculous for me to hurt myself. I hurt myself all the time. But maybe God does use some very bizarre sets of circumstances because we're too stupid to do what he just says do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe, can I get a witness? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like there's times where it, it just seems as if the miracle is not in him healing. The miracle is in him stepping back and letting us overdo it, and then we're like, oh, I should not have done that. And miraculously, we recognize, I've got, my life has got to change. I've got to do something different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I wonder if that's what was going on in the church when they're just really kind of starting to experience the moving of, this, of the Holy Ghost and these miraculous things that are <laughs> happening. And then these two people lie about giving of all things and they both end up dying and all of a sudden people are like whoa maybe we had God in a box maybe he's not just a genie that we can rub and say I want to be able to walk I want to be able to see Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we come through that, and it says that they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That all of these things occurred, but instead of them murmuring to each other, like, can you believe what happened to Ananias? Oh, and Sapphira. Well, she used to make the most beautiful clothes. None of that. That was not what was happening. The Bible says that there was all these signs and wonders and they were all in one accord on Solomon's porch right there at the temple. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Wow. So then where, where it starts, where it goes on from there is, and, the, and of the rest, uh, dared no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. So you see this sort of separation of if you didn't believe, you didn't really want to be counted among that number because you saw what happened yeah. to Ananias and Sapphira. So all of a sudden you see only the people who have a real faith and a real desire to please God. All of the fakers were like, oh, no, no, this, I'm good, I'm good. But at the same time, the people magnified them. In other words, no, no, I, I would never claim to be one of you, but wow, God really moves through you. God is really at work in you. Okay. Did, yes, sir. Um, John 14, 12 talks, uh, says, uh, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me and will also do the works that I do, this is Jesus speaking, and greater works than these will, will he do. Um, it looked like um, Jesus needed to put the fear of God into everybody to bring them together as one. And to have them focused on him rather than their all, all their own little petty things. That unity and, and doing what he does yeah. is what brings the faith to do greater things than what Jesus did. Right. And so it's, it's kind of like an equation, but not. Um, it's, it's about our focus. Where's our focus? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's good. It's, it's about it's our focus. It's hard to focus get on? everybody focused. On the same thing, like we're we're like a bunch of cats. We're we're all over the place, and Jesus is trying to say, "Focus here, focus here," and watch what happens. Yeah. And so that's he helps in this situation by making something very drastic happen to get everybody to focus. Yeah. For this great outpouring. Absolutely, that's good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. And you definitely see that there is fruit from that right off the bat. This, con this connectivity that's happening and this, um, somebody brought up last week that it seems like the church, that the word of God spreads when there's persecution from outside the church, 
Well, when there's dissension within the church, that's when the church loses its focus and its unity. And the Lord stamped that out immediately when it rose up in Ananias and Sapphira. And um, so when they come together in one accord, it says that the believers, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. You know, multitudes is not like a dozen. Right. <laughs> I mean, you might go to Krispy Kreme and get a bunch of donuts, but that's probably just a dozen. If you had a multitude of donuts, what would you do, John? <laughs> what's, what's on top? <laughs> sprinkles. Sprinkles. Sprinkles, my friend. Icing and sprinkles. For sure. And just plain. So you have. So then you have them like really like these. So there's a separation that's happening there between unbelievers and believers. But the people that are seeing and believing, they are being added to the church in multitudes. And then it opens up the scripture in so much that when that they brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats that the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. What a weird thing. Yeah. John. For the outsiders looking in, there's obviously gonna some of them gonna think that Peter has this authority. Not that it's been designated. Mm, I got you. But it appears as if a stranger would say, Oh, Peter's got this power. Mm. He doesn't have any power. Oh, right. we know that, but just to read this, it looks it sounds like and maybe it's a stranger right. stand by like this guy's got power. So, and that would explain why it's like, well, why it's the focal point there is on Peter, and they're bringing their sick out there because Peter's passing by. Yeah, it's shadow. Or right. He's the one that put hands on him. It's like uh -huh. he has this authority. He does. Right. It, but it's confusing someone outside. Yeah. Right? And yet we see that there, was, there came a multitude out of the cities around about Jerusalem bringing sick folks and those that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Isn't that amazing? From a certain point of, pe point of view, two unbelievers died, and there was a great revival and healings that took place. From a certain point of view. Right. Bridget? So, even if even if initially they thought that Peter was performing a miracle in and of himself, he didn't let it stay that way. He did he did then tell them of God. So the miracles were used as a witness for the unbelievers. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you see I mean you see that we'll see that all the way through the book of Acts. You know, the end. Of, you know, at some point, Paul gets shipwrecked on an island and gets bit by a snake. He shakes it off, and they start worshiping as, him as a god. And he's like, oh, no. "Nope," but I can tell you who he is. So yeah, there is a redirecting of people's attention to because people are attracted to power. That's why there's so many people that live in Washington D.C. Yeah. <laughs> it's the human condition to be attracted to power. And that's not limited to any one type of power. When the power of God is shown forth in the Old Testament, you know, and there's a prophet doing something crazy, inevitably, here comes a whole bunch of heathens and a bunch of sons of the prophet. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so looking at this passage of Scripture, um, what do you see in here that would be sin to avoid? You know, I mean, I didn't finish out where Terry was reading, where it you know, talks about the, the high priest and, and that sort of thing. We, we have all the way down through verse 20. But do you see anything that jumps out at you? Well, that verse you're just talking about is jealousy. Nice, yeah, all right. 
mistakenly putting their faith in a man that they hadn't gotten gotten it yet. Right. <clears throat> they, yeah. It wasn't yeah. Peter. Right. Yeah. The um, what's interesting to me about this high priest, who was a particularly wicked high priest, is that he was a Sadducee. In about the limit of what I know about the Sadducees is that they did not believe in the resurrection. Right. Which means that this was the only life he believed in, which means that of course he was going to be wicked. He had a place of power. He was going to use it to his benefit and the benefit of his family. Because what was he going to be? You know, what did he have to look forward to? Nothing. Nothing. But what a lousy religion. Oh, God. Mm. Depressing, right? Who knows? I mean, these people are seeing a miracle. And they know it's coming from God. And yet they're keeping their distance. They want to follow the Spirit into what they need to. Mm. Yeah, because there's some that separate themselves. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Deb? The Sadducees, and this is where you know God's got a sense of humor, they didn't believe in angels either. That's true. So they did not. Open some doors. Yeah, that's a great point, Deb. This is such a great point because. In this last few verses here, it talks about the Sadducees, okay, and the high priest being one of them, and that they were filled with indignation, throw the, the apostles into prison, and then the angel of the Lord by night <laughs> opens the door and brings them out. In other words, that which the Sadducees specifically did not believe in happened. <laughs> so great, so great. All right. Well, and, all what, this, and that was done. The guards were not asleep. Right. They were not out at McDonald's. Right. They were on duty. Right. And the doors opened. <laughs> right. Because I mean, and the it other just... part that I saw a couple of verses up from that. Yeah. They took them past so that Peter's shadow might fall. And blah 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 blah. <laughs> they were out there sick and they're tormented by impure spirits, and some of them were healed. Mm. No. No. What does it say? Oh. 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 Yes. There has got to be some sort of powerful correlation between that unity of being in one accord and all. Because we've seen that in the in the book of Acts, chapter three. They were praying and they were all in one accord and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And then you find them in one accord here, and all were, who were sick or had a vexed spirit were healed. Mm. Like that, there is something very powerful about, as Kevin said, everyone getting pointed and focused on, what did T.F. Tenney say? The, the main thing, keeping the main thing, the main thing, yes. you know? <clears throat> There's, there's something about it, y'all. I'm telling you, and if you can feel it sometimes, that we're knocking right around the edges of it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That as a, as a body, we're knocking right around the edges of it, and by no means does God need all of us to be in one mind and one accord for him to move. It's just that when we are in one mind and one accord, there is something extra yes. unleashed, you know? Maybe like a pipe or, or, or a, an artery that has some blockages. It's uh -huh. just a lot easier for something to flow through if, if there there's aren't nothing any in the way. That's right. Away. Yeah, that's it for sure. For sure. It seems like the people are being healed. None believers being healed. God's grace is on them. Yeah. And today we see that even today. There are people, non believers, they're not nice people even. They have healings, you know? Yeah. It's like, why does that happen? You know? <laughs> and it's God's grace. Yeah, it's God's grace, for sure. All right, what about promises to claim? Y'all see some promises in here? It's very evident that the Spirit of the Lord still heals. That he still... Uh, releases from evil spirits or vexed spirits. And they who were with the 
you out of a prison. And that he will release you out of any prison. Whatever that bondage may be. But that he also honors your faith. That's good. That he honors your faith. Because even though these people were unbelievers, in that they didn't know who Jesus was. Right. They, they certainly believed, believed what they saw. They believed enough yeah. to bring all those people out of the city yeah. and out of the town and to that one little area so that they could get a healing. So right. they had faith. Yes. Even if they didn't quite understand in whom they had faith. Right. But once it was explained to them, they had had it after the church. It's like uh, when he was on the mount. Right, when Paul was at Mars Hill. But yet, they didn't know who God was. So he yeah. took that opportunity mm -hmm. to open up the, the word to them. Right. Yes. And so you're able to see, essentially, that everything that happens in our lives really is, miraculous or otherwise, it is supposed to draw people into a place where they want to know about our God. You know? And it's essentially what the whole point of us being here is. Is the Lord, you know, we stir the water. Wherever we go, there's ripples that come out, that ripple out from us. We're stirring the water. And people don't always know why, but they know something. And so we want to live that life that requires people to ask, why are you different? I like the thing that this angel, when they were in the, in the jail, doors open. See ya. No, he didn't do that. He said, now, this is what I want you to do. Yeah. You go over to the temple. Yeah. And you tell... Not one or two. You tell everybody. Yes. Yep. About this. Now, I, and when I read that, I was thinking, well, wow, this is so much unlike what Jesus did at certain points in his time. He would kill some. Somebody would be healed. Right. Somebody. Right. <laughs> this guy's saying, tell. Tell everybody. everybody. That's that's a really great point, Terry is because Jesus, because the purpose of him being here, had, things had to transpire in a certain order of events, which when you see how many times that the disciples, that the apostles and the disciples are beat up in the book of Acts, you do think, wow, Jesus literally got one really bad beating in his ministry. Essentially, all of the punishment that Jesus received was all during that Passion Week, right? That's impossible because you see every other believer through the book of Acts, it is constant. They're getting thrown in jail. They're getting stoned. They're getting beat. They're getting whatever. Chased out of town. Exactly. Chased out of town. But you see time and time again where Jesus passed through the midst of them. And he was constantly telling people, don't tell anybody about this. But you just healed me. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. You don't think they're going to notice? Right. 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 Don't you think my family's going to recognize the fact that I walk home? <laughs> it's going to be weird. Um, and then you see that flip side. When, when the church is born, then you see the opposite. Even the angels of heaven are saying, go Tell it on the mountain. Right. You see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but they tell them to go right back to the place where they got arrested. Yeah. They say, go back to where those religious people are still hanging out. Right. And tell it all. Isn't that something? <laughs> Boy, that's asking for it. Oh, yeah. Great testimony. God used that situation, let them go to jail, be arrested, etc., to get the focus on 
their faith, and therefore others will come along. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've gotten off of Peter for a while, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cool. So and, cool. And, and nobody asked how they got out of prison. It's never, that question was never brought up. <laughs> it is right. an interesting chapter. Right. But nobody asked, how'd you get here? How'd, how'd you, you get, get out here? of prison? What happened? Don't worry, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's really good. So what about examples to follow? I think uh, obedience would be a good example. They, they didn't make an effort to do damage control. Two people just died. Yeah. And they could have tried to keep it undercover. Right. And that wasn't their focus. You know? The right. focus was towards Jesus and what he wanted them to do. And then God just poured out you know, all the blessings on that. Yeah. But what do churches do now? <laughs> trying to cover things up. And right. Um, that's a really good point. In both, so one of the things that we do as, as individuals is we are very good at justification. Okay? And so as Christians, we feel like we need to explain when God does something and when he doesn't do something. <laughs> We feel like we need to explain why things happen. You know, it's, it, it really is awful. Jed and I have been to more funerals than any person on earth. Just because, just because of our station and we know a lot of people. And so you, you find that people, when they've lost someone, they do kind of have this desire to seek answers for why. And I, ne I do not answer that question. I have no idea. I don't tell them something ridiculous like God needed another angel in heaven. No, he doesn't. Your husband was a devil. <laughs> and even if he was an angel, what does God need another angel for? Those are trite words that do not really fill a void. But we feel like we got to say them. We got to make God make sense. But we... You can't. God doesn't make a bit of sense. Amen. Why in the world would he put up with us? Nobody that has sense would do that. <laughs> but he very patiently, continually draws us along this pathway, pouring out grace abundantly and above measure so that maybe one day we'll actually recognize we don't have the answers and no one is actually expecting us to give it to them. We're supposed to be directing them to the one who does have all the answers. You know? Deb? Today was Council's birthday. I've been thinking about the shipwrecks. I was thinking about, you know, Ford's mom got baptized four days before she dies in a car accident. Yeah. Four days. Right. And, and it was like, you know, over and over the family would be saying that it's such a blessing to yeah. know that she did that, yes. that, that it happened at that point in time. And then with Kelso, at his homegoing, would we have seven people get baptized at a funeral? It was something like that, and yeah. It was it a bunch. Was like God just turned that whole thing around. Yeah. And, um, and he can do that when we are kind of walking in sync with him. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good example, you know, of because that's essentially what happened here is in the passing of two people, there was a revival that took place, and that doesn't make any sense. Amen. You know? And yet that's what happened. You've been really quiet tonight, Mom. It's disturbing. Uh, <laughs> two, two things. Um Talking about the church and their their faith and their being in one accord, I I know that it's always God's will for us to work together to be of one accord and to to have great faith like that we're having here. But I really I really have to look at all of the Book of Acts and see that there are seasons. That's good. Yeah. Now this time they were having great faith. Yeah. 
you know, you can move on a few chapters where Peter's thrown in jail again. Now, they've already seen an angel bring him out, but he's thrown in jail again, yeah. and they're all gathered up trying to pray for him, and he shows up at the door, and they don't even believe it's him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, That's it's true. That is going to happen, like, yes. But, but we have right. all, you know, if you've been in church in any length of time, you have felt yes. there are seasons when it is so easy to believe. Yes. And during the, that season, it's just like the miracles just pop up yeah. like like fruitful trees. Right. You know, they just, it just happened. Yeah. Um, and even in this instance, though, you know, the angel told them to go back to the temple. Yeah. Terry was pointing that out. Right. Well, when they were walking right back into where they were going to be beaten the next day. Yeah. Yeah, wow, right. You know, and they could have said, why, God? Why did you send me back into this to be hurt? Yeah. And how many times are we led into a situation mm -hmm. where we can be a light to shine, but we are hurt mm -hmm. right. in that situation? Mm -hmm. And we wonder, God, why did you lead me into this? Right. Mm -hmm. But he has a reason. Mm -hmm. He has a reason. Right. And the, and the example in that is we've got to not allow our focus to turn inward why me why is this happening to me the answer is God is at work here yeah. and it's still you know another example is it still didn't stop them you know as we'll find out next week <laughs> Thank you for that shameless plug. Next week in the book of Act, 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 Act. I keep going back. I keep going back. Yeah. Even though they were told not to, they keep going back to that right. temple. Yeah. In verse 14, you can see this statement again and again. It starts with, they believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. And until someone believes in God, you know, they're going to be like the Sadducees and just be upset about it happening. But once they believe in the Lord, anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah, once you get your eyes on Jesus, it, the, the doors just open up. John? Another example of Paul would be have faith be healed. I mean, somebody said, take on good Joe and put on Main Street. And when Peter walks by, a shadow's going to heal him. It's like, you carry him. What are you talking <laughs> about? You, can't have, you have to have faith. <laughs> And you have to have the faith. For yeah. us, it could be years before our healing takes place, but you still have to believe it's going to come. Right. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Sometimes our mouth confesses, but our heart does not believe. Yeah. yeah. Don't miss next week. Don't miss next week. I know. I'm reading it. I know. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. But he even allowed there's a, a story when he asked the, the father, do you believe? He said, yes, I believe, but help out my unbelief. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to be careful that we don't just turn away from the Lord because we know we have doubt. We have to use the grain of faith or the mustard seed that we have to hang on to that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And also, you know, in the middle of that, a lot of times we'll say, well, you know, these were great men of God. Right. Yeah. You know, they, of course they didn't doubt. But when you look on later, into where they were having that prayer meeting, and Peter shows up and they don't believe it's him, if you really look through that, you can see that Paul and Barnabas have just showed up back in Jerusalem. Where do you think they were? They were in the middle of that prayer meeting. It doesn't say that by name, right? but they were probably there because uh, just a couple of verses later it talks about them leaving Jerusalem again. Uh, they were there and they didn't believe either. <laughs> you know, right. there, there is just times that we, we're human. Yeah. Every, all of these people are human. Yeah. But God uses humans. Yeah. He doesn't use great men. Right. He uses the he uses the poor and the ignorant. As my mom used to say. <laughs> he uses the poor and the ignorant. You know these guys before they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were like the people that get interviewed by 
by the news networks after something happens. Oh, yeah. After and it's the most yeah. inbred, backwoods country people that they, they interview. And, well, I don't know. Teeth, yeah. That's right. <laughs> See what happened? Well, yeah. <laughs> so, the, so, the spirit of... God can do amazing things. Yes, yes, the Spirit of God can do amazing things. I'm so grateful. Yes, so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody get a reference? Yeah. Uh, Ray Stevens, sir. In the documentary of Ray Stevens, sir. <laughs> All right, any, any other commands to keep in the midst? Verse 20 is just a remake of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Right. Go, stand, and speak to all the people all the words of this life. Yeah. And I find that interesting, the way he said that, because... He didn't say, go go and tell them how to be saved as far as preach to them a doctrine. Yeah. You know, he didn't phrase it that way. Right. He said, right. go speak to them all the words of this life. In other words, tell them words whereby they can live. Yes. Disciple. That's great. This life. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Whereby they can live. Yes. And, and we, like, we got to keep sight of that church family. That people in this life are not trying, they're not looking to you to give them a picture of what the next life is. They're trying to get through this one. Yeah. Like, at this point, who cares about what comes next? How do I get through this mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. Jesus is the answer for this one. He's the answer for everything. Everything. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's good. All right. Any final thoughts, anyone? Be bold. Um, courageous. Yes. Be obedient. Get out there. Be bold. Be courageous. Be obedient. Get out there. Speaking all the words of this life. Time is short. Do what matters. That's yes. What, you know. Right. Don't get caught up in the stuff that doesn't. That's good. All right. Anyone else? Karen? Um, um, in verse 13, it talks about how they did not, um, how do say it? They, they, no one, no man himself, they didn't. It says, and the rest, the verse, first, no man joined himself to them. But the people magnified them. So I was thinking that maybe the power of God was at work in such a way that their faith was just soaring because they walked with Jesus. So they had that memory of what he did. In John, it talks about how um, Jesus had raised a man from the dead. From John 2 and 22, it says, When therefore risen from the dead, the disciples remember that he had said this unto them, and they believed in the scriptures of the word Jesus had said. So they would remember it, right. knowing how powerful God was. It was, like, yeah, yeah, I could do this too. God said I could. Right. You know? Maybe so, because like you see that um, all the way through the Book of Acts, you see times when they're remembering back, and you see it in the Gospels also, when his disciples are remembering back things that he said, it's all of a sudden coming to their mind. Which I think is also a good reminder for us to read the Word of God. Because he can bring it back to your mind if you just get it in there. You know? Technically, we don't lose it. If we're reading something, it's all in there. You can't always pull it back out, but with the Spirit of God, with His help, we can. How many times do we remember things we didn't really remember memorizing? <laughs> Mindy? I think one thing that 
And I know we've touched on it, I, I know recently we've had messages about peace that the opposite of, of anxiety, anxiety comes from fear and, and they're linked together, but the opposite of that is peace. And to go through all of these things, you not only have to have faith, but your faith causes you to have peace. That's good. And remembering the things that he has done in the past, either be through in, in your life directly or because somebody shared their testimony, mm -hmm. you have that faith and then you can have, that, have the peace. And it reminds me, I'm not usually a, an anxious person. I don't have a lot of fear, per se. But a lot of times in the middle of the night, I might lay awake for an hour or two. And if I let myself let the enemy in just a, just a tiny little bit, it seems like those, that, that little thought of negativity just snowballs. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, now, okay, I, I just, I just don't want, I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want right. to. Right. Okay. I was and just like, a little concerned. But yeah. Now, yeah. but <laughs> like, oh no, that could, you know, and I mean, the book was just not, it was two nights ago, I think it was, and that was happening. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And, and I was like, Lord, not only do, you know, do I need to go to sleep, but I need to have some peace. So I just trust you with all things, Lord. I trust you with this. I, tr I, I trust that, that, the, that everything's going to be okay. It's going to be way better than we ever could expect or imagine. Right. And just, I just need peace and to trust you that, Whatever will be, will be. And just like that, I was I was asleep because he gave me that peace and I didn't have to worry about. That's anything. so awesome. That is so awesome. Bridget? Just this week, I heard on, on the radio, a uh, minister was saying that when you experience fear, and we all will, mm -hmm. consider the personal invitation to prayer. Right. Wow. That is really good. Change the focus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I had posted earlier this week uh, a quote from uh, George MacDonald, which was one of C.S. Lewis's favorite authors. In fact, he credits George MacDonald's writings to being what led him to a relationship with God. But anyway, so George MacDonald, uh, this is a quote of his, Trust and obedience is the greatest thing that is required of any of us. The care that is filling your mind at this moment, or just waiting until you lay the book aside to consume you, that need, which is no real need, is a demon sucking at the spring of your life. Do you object, saying, but no, you do not understand? The thing I am worrying about is a reasonable anxiety and unavoidable care. Does it involve something you have to do at this very moment, I ask? Well, no, then you are allowing it to usurp the place of something mm. that is required of you at this moment. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing that can ever be required of any man or woman. And what is that? To trust in the living God. Amen. That is what is required of us. And Mindy, you just nailed it. You literally were just saying, no, I trust you with all of this. And that's what we're supposed to be doing in every moment. And that's what Peter did when he comes out of that jail. And the angel says, now go right there in the midst of that temple and speak in the midst of all those people that you know do not have your best interests in mind. Do it fearlessly because you trust in the living God. A little off subject, but, you know, we repent and we come to the Lord and he forgives our sins. Is there not an ongoing repentance we should have? I never hear anybody talk about, I still repent at all. Right. Well, why don't people ever talk about that? It's something that should be should go ongoing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I, yes, absolutely. I don't hear anybody ever talk about it. I don't know why that is. I don't either, but it seems like something important. Enough it's absolutely something that has to happen. I mean, we yeah. have to do that. And the attitude of repentance needs to be Every continued. day, yeah. And, and an attitude of repentance, I mean, perhaps that's why we have to be in a constant state of prayer, you know, praying without ceasing, is having that attitude of repentance in which we would much rather the Lord forget that we messed up 
right. and remind us so that we can address it. Right. Right? Like, how many times did you do something and you then you were just like, oh, God, that was the wrong thing. I hope my parents don't notice. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily that we were, we didn't want to, just didn't want to deal with that friction of having to deal with the wrongdoing and having to talk about it and having to, and we do that with God sometimes, and it's absolutely unnecessary for us to dread that because it is the most freeing thing in the world to take it to him, you know, to let him have it, you know? You know, when these thoughts of anxiety and um, despair or fear, remember who sends those thoughts in right. to you, those, those come from the enemy. So we should be taking those Telling the devil to get out of here. That's good. We just have to keep fighting. Yeah. Keep praying. That's good. <laughs> because it's not just a thought, it's an attack, is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's allowing, it's us allowing, it, we are giving place to the enemy, right? So when those things come against us, we do have to take those thoughts into captivity yes. and say, wait a second, let me remind you uh -huh. who I trust. Yes. You know? Like Mindy said, she's like, I'm giving you all of this because I trust you with it. Here you go. Here you go, Lord. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. I just made, here's this mountain I just made out of a molehill. I'm going to give this to you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I hope that if you would like to sing, that you will come to Bella Vista at 3 p.m. on Saturday. I hope that if you... Uh, want to dance that you'll come to worship service on Sunday morning at 1030. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that you'll do some singing and dancing between now and then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Let's just thank the Lord for this time together. Jesus. Lord, we're so grateful for the opportunity to study your word and to give place for you to speak to our hearts and to open up your word to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the encouragement that we feel in seeing, Lord, the boldness of your disciples and the courage, Lord Jesus, that you gave them, the anointing that you placed upon them. Help us, too, to have that courage and that boldness to allow your spirit to flow so that we would stand and give the words to all of this life, to all of the people. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus.